Hello, my name is Emily, as you may or may not know, and today we are going to be talking about biopics. There are some really beautiful, amazing, award-winning, <coughs> sorry, I lost my voice a little bit because I was at the Blackpink concert and I was literally losing my, I was absolutely feral and I'm sorry for anybody around me, but anyways. Um, there are some really amazing pieces of art that are biopics, right? Um, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with biopics. It's just sometimes there are issues when it's not done right. The first thing I want to talk about when it comes to biopics is that uh, not everyone should have one, right? You know, I already have a whole video dedicated to this, but the biopics about serial killers, like... Have we not evolved past this, y'all? Apparently not. I mean, the Dahmer series was so incredibly successful. The biopics of serial killers have given a means for their fans to kind of like have material, right? And have things to be editing and, and, you know, making little cute videos of them and whatnot. I personally do not need to see little uwu fan cams of Jeffrey Dahmer confessing to his murders and how he would eat people. Like, if your family member was murdered and got taken away from you, and then their murderer got a huge Netflix show that was extremely successful depicting the murders that they committed, one of them being against your family member, yeah, I would not be a happy camper, okay? I would be an irate camper. The tent is getting burned down, bitch. Why are we giving the limelight to these people, all right? Hollywood, babe. Put the camera down and just let these people rot in hell. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear that- No, I do not swear. Swearing is a sin. I wasn't finished. Also, murdering people is a sin, in case you weren't aware. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Miss Wang, is it true that you were at the Walmart on Bruce Boulevard on the night of October 8th? Yes. And what were you doing there? I was getting laundry detergent, a new set of knives. I damaged my old ones um, because I was stabbing multiple people to death. Let's see, super plus tampons. Wait, um, what? <laughs> Sorry, I have a heavy flow. <laughs> okay, it's on the record now. No, did you just admit that you stabbed multiple people to death? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've killed like 34 people. I thought, didn't y'all know that? That's why I'm here, right? All right. Well, that was quick. Uh, Miss Wang, you have been found guilty for 34 counts of second degree murder. Um, you will be sentenced to one high budget miniseries on Netflix. All right, moving on. Hang on, what? What? You're sentencing her to a Netflix mini-series? I mean, I'll take Don't it. Don't worry, it won't get nominated for any Emmys, okay? Just a Golden Globe. Oh my god, it'll be nominated for a Gigi? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Your Honor. I think you need to come up with a harsher punishment. All right, fine. I guess, um, you were also sentenced to a Dateline special. Is this a joke right now? Because it's not funny. Fine. During the special, they will only use extremely unflattering photos of you. No! That is gonna tarnish my image. And stabbing 34 people to death doesn't? The other thing about movies that center around real people is that sometimes they are damaging to the subject. Sometimes people don't want their story told or they don't like the way they were depicted or sometimes there's just things in the movie that are inaccurate and can blur the line between fact and fiction. For example, Pamela Anderson has denounced the Hulu series Pam and Tommy, which is about her life, um, which has been getting a quite a bit of critical acclaim, actually. From what I've read, um, it seems that she does not really want very traumatic, emotional, depressing parts of her life to be, uh, you know, depicted on television and then screened to the public. Uh, which who can blame her, right? Another example of using someone's trauma for profit in a, I can't even call it a biopic, but a film revolving a real person uh, is Blonde that was on Netflix. I personally did not watch this film because I just don't really want to give it any profit uh, knowing what I know about it. Just that, you know, basically it seems that they, yet again, Hollywood yet again, is just, you know, exploiting Marilyn Monroe. You know, they just depict her as this helpless, 
fragile victim, you know, this damsel in distress who just lacks complexity. And the director of Blonde even made it clear that this was not supposed to be based on fact, like her real life. It's based on a fictional uh, book about Marilyn Monroe. Despite the director recognizing that the work is basically, you know, fiction, it still perpetuates this same image of Marilyn Monroe that we all know and that is so mainstream and views her as so one-dimensional. You know, there was an opportunity to tell the story of who this woman really was, right? Not just make an extension of the already inaccurate depiction that we all know. If I were Marilyn, uh, I certainly would not be happy and I don't think she was. Uh, the lead actress, Anna de Armas, actually said that she felt like Marilyn's spirit was on set and that when she would get angry, she would be throwing things off the walls, which, you know, girl go off. I mean, if I was dead and someone made a shitty movie using my name and my image without actually portraying me accurately, um, yeah, I'd be pretty mad too. Oh my God, girl, they made a movie about you. That was quick, I just died last week. Yeah, but Hollywood doesn't care about that, okay? They see an opportunity and they are gonna take it, bitch. True but it's literally number three on Netflix in the US. I mean, that's crazy, right? Oh, God, I am so glad that we have Netflix in heaven. Well, if we didn't, it would be hell, right? Actually, they do have Netflix down there. It just buffers a lot and everything is dubbed entirely in gibberish and there are no subtitles. So whenever they watch something, they just don't know what the is going on. Oh, well, anyways, what's the name of the movie? I wanna look up the reviews. Oh yeah, it's called um, Amanda Wang's IBS Journey, The Storm Within. What? Amanda Wang's IBS journey, the story- I never had IBS. <laughs> okay, yeah. And I bet you never took in a foster child and forced him to sleep in the garage on wet newspaper and drink milk out of a little bowl like a kitten either. What? No, I never did that. What, so everything in the movie is just fake? Wait, be quiet. I have to look at the reviews now. 27% on Rotten Tomatoes? Starring Amy Schumer? I will admit that was an interesting casting choice. This one review says, one star. I would give it zero stars, but I'm giving it one because I like the part where she took out her used tampon on the bus and started swinging it around and hitting people with it as performance art. It wasn't that funny nor moving, but it grossed out the men around me, so I enjoyed it. I never did that. I mean, that does kind of seem like something you would do. Do not say that to me. That is so rude. Okay, do not speak ill of the dead. I am literally dead too. Oh my god, this other review says, was not a fan of the part where she was teaching young preschoolers slurs and encouraging them to say them to random people on the street? Where are they getting this from? I don't know, girl, okay? I didn't make the movie. Also, none of this has to do with IBS, which I don't even have. To be honest, the IBS was a little bit more of a side plot. I mean, the director did say that he took some creative liberties. Creative liberties? Everything in this is false, except for my name. The other thing about the biopic, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, is just how much dedication it takes for the actor to portray a real life person. When preparing to be the lead in a biopic, it takes a lot of work and dedication and there is less room for artistic interpretation, right? Because you're not playing a character, you're being a real person who has existed or does exist. And you know, because of this, actually, many people go method, uh, which is kind of like a controversial uh, tactic used for acting. It's basically when you never break character, right? So you are constantly in the mindset of that person. You are, <clears throat> sorry, moving around in the world as that person. For example, Austin Butler, uh, put himself through some extensive research on Elvis, uh, you know, was taking classes on how to sing like him, how to speak like him, dance like him, move like him, everything. When portraying an icon on the big screen, the process can be grueling, right? You're gonna go to great lengths to make sure that you do it right. Which for some includes staying in character for extended periods of time, um, no matter what it means for the people around you. Hi, welcome to Applebee's. My name is Sarah. I'll be your server today. My name is Abraham Lincoln. Okay, sure, whatever. Uh, can I get you started with our $5 margarita special? No, thank you. Uh, I have never heard of a May Garrida, so... I will have the mead. The mead? Yes, I will have a pint of the mead and some grinded up slop as well. You know, my wooden teeth can be very sensitive. Abraham Lincoln didn't have wooden teeth. That was George Washington. Shit. Do you want to just look at the actual menu? Because we don't have slop or mead. All right, 
Fine. Where can I look at the menu? You can use your phone to scan the QR code. I have no idea what any of those words mean. Oh my god. Just use your phone to scan the QR code. What is that thing? Which? Okay, can we stop with this bit now? All right, I have other customers. This is not a bit. I am Abraham Lincoln, 16th president of the United States. All right, four score and seven years ago. Okay, ever heard of it, bitch? You know what? I'm telling my manager that we need to ban theater kids from this location because you guys ruined the ambiance for everybody. Do not bring up theater to me. That is very triggering. So that is all I have for you guys today. Um, if I ever get cast in a biopic, y'all better watch it. But um, yeah, thank you all for watching. Um, I hope you liked today's video. Have a good day and until next time. Jesus Christ. I never had IBS. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth, the truth, and nothing? Oh, what is it? Why do, why do they say that three times? It's like you literally just, like, no, I'm gonna tell a lie, the whole lie, and nothing but lies.